Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bob's Bookshelf. I'm your host, Bob. Uh, in this episode, um, a beautiful small scale book, but incredibly detailed and driven conceptually in a really interesting way. It's uh, Powers of Ten about the relative size of the universe. This is a book that's based on the famous Powers of Ten uh, film made by the Eames office, which in turn was based on another book called Cosmic View, The Universe in 40 Jumps um, by Kays Buka. Um, so I think this is a really fascinating um, book because of the way it relates to the content. So there was a book and there was a film and then there was another book. And this is that second book is what we're going to be talking about here. So this book is from 1982. Uh, the film that you probably know about the powers of 10 is from 1977. There was a sort of rough comp sketch version of this film made in 1968. Um, and if you don't know the film, you, I'm, I'm struggling to figure out if you should watch the film first, then look at the book or look at the book and then look at the film. I suppose you could do this in either order. Nonetheless, I will have links to the sketch version of the film, the final film and a PDF of uh, Kay's book as version, Cosmic View, The Universe in 40 Jumps. And uh, if you can hear my dog, Toby, barking in the background, please excuse him. So um, what is the powers of 10 itself about? I'm gonna have to read this. I'm familiar with the film, but I uh, didn't know all the details. So uh, powers of 10 about the relative size of the universe is a concept that investigates the idea of an exponential series. This was done by illustrating the relative size of things and the significance of adding a zero to any number, thus the powers of 10. It begins with a scene on Earth in a Chicago park, and then the camera steadily moves away until it reaches the end of the known universe. And then as it moves back again to Earth, it continues toward where it began and then goes further, reaching down to the level of a carbon atom. Okay, so it's pretty fascinating stuff. Um, one interesting and, and key thing to keep in mind about this is that the center of where everything is happening remains constant throughout. So this square keeps getting uh, zooming out or zooming in as we go through space. All right, with that introduction, let's pin and begin. Okay, so here we go. So powers of 10 about the relative size of the universe. Um, not a super thick book but uh, nicely done, a jacket over cloth with a clear foil. Uh, one interesting thing about this for me was that, uh, let's make sure you can see that there's the foil, um, is that you know, this foil is corresponding pretty much to the position of this on the cover. But once you get inside, the position of this moves to here. So part of me wonders, you know, should this have been up here instead? I don't know. I'm not going to second guess these people anymore. All right, so off we go. So here we have, um, let's get this all centered, introduction. So we have a, a three column grid with two columns of the same size where the text lives and then a narrower column that is used for all kinds of stuff, uh, usually captions though. Okay, contents, title page, and then this lovely essay in here. So already we can see how that third column is being used. So we have uh, an illustration in the column. Okay, uh, sometimes only one column is used and that allows for a column for the image. One really beautiful little thing they're doing here is that the captions are set in the same size as the text, but they're printed in, in a sort of warm gray ink. We'll bring this forward. So hopefully you can get a sense of the different texture between 
this text and the running text. So that's a really nice uh, little touch that they've got going there. So as we go through, so here again is the light gray type. Um, these uh, illustrations move in and out of the grid in an interesting way. So sometimes they live up here, sometimes they live in here. Um, so again, depending on what the image needs to do, the text kinds of moves around the edges of it. Okay. Subheads in all caps with half spaces on either side. Really lovely spread here with this image, with the caption against it and the text running alongside. Okay, so then we get to this section divider that uh, separates the, um, the beginning of the book from the content of the book itself. Now, here's what's really fun about this. There's this spread before we get into everything that is advice to the reader. So this explains in detail how the book is structured and it's almost like a user guide. It, it explains in a sense, the navigation of the book, okay? So those of you who know the film know it begins with this image of a couple taking a nap in a park after having a picnic and it zooms out and in from uh, this man's hand. Okay. All right. So we turn the page and we get to what is in the film halfway through the film. So we're all the way, we're out as far away from earth as the film goes which is uh, 10 to the 25th power of meters. So there's a couple things happening here. You could go through the book this way and start all the way out and then get to the middle and then go all the way in. Or you could start at what you know is the beginning, which is here, and then decide which way to go, either backwards, which gets us further and further away, or forwards, which gets us further and further close, all right? And one fascinating thing they do here is that there's a white edge to this page, which allows you to find it among all the other black pages. So if you look, I'll try to make this a little easier here. So if you look along the edge here, you see this little white stripe that allows you to find that picture, which is the middle of the book but is actually the beginning of the film, all right? What this allows you to do that the film does not allow you to do is to go back and forth and compare similar distances. So this is one meter in, and this is one meter out, right? Because we're one spread away from the center. Two meters out, two meters in, et cetera. So you could do, using the book, you can, you can split the film in half in a sense, and look at it in this comparative kind of way that you can't do when you're watching the film because the film is moving in a linear direction. So um, anyway, let's go back to here. So this gives you the details on how to navigate the book. And then we begin. So on the right-hand page is essentially uh, stills from the movie, all right? This text down here captions what's happening in the film uh, but it is not a transcription of the narration of the film. Another nice thing that's happening here, which you might, I'll try to move the light around. So you can see, I think right here, the distance between, the difference between the color of black out here on the edges of the frame and the black that defines the image area of the films, right? So it's just a difference in sheen and density of black. On this side of all the spreads is additional information that does not appear in the film at all. So this provides a kind of parallel narrative structure to the book. Um, and what's also beautiful about this is that these pages are designed in a slightly different way all the way through, depending on the kind of material that they have to work with. Okay, so you can see how this is happening here, right? We have this jump. We have this series of columns. I think we're switching to a four column grid here. 
So this is uh, in the three column. And then these narrower columns are in the four column grid. So we have this sort of overlapping uh, column system here. All right. And depending on how much information is available, depends on how much they design. So this is, so what happens on the right is kind of consistent. We always have the little square in the center that shows us, get close enough so you can see it, the blue square. And then on the left continues all the other material, okay? So at this point, we're coming in. We're getting closer and closer to the picnic in the park. Really beautiful, this scattered display of images here. All right, and we're getting close to our solar system. One interesting thing they do is they give us the orbits of the planets to sort of orient us. Remember, this is from 1982, so you can imagine the kind of source material they have. Um, it makes me wonder about you know, how, how often this material, this concept should be reinvestigated because it seems like uh, all the time humanity has more and more material to draw from. It seems like we could get out even further and possibly you know, in closer even further. And certainly the kinds of imagery that is available because of all the, the uh, um, space probes that have been sent out is even greater now than it was in 1982, all right? So now the whole of the earth appears and we're starting to zoom in. You can see Lake Michigan already. And we come in and reach, you can start seeing the park. There's the picnickers. And then here's that picture from the beginning. What's really nice here is there is no text on this side. All it says is, this is the scale we know best, our own, right? So these are the things we know. This is the scale that's familiar to us. All right, and then from here, it gets closer. And again, it, there are comparisons to uh, things of similar scales, of similar sizes, of other ways of visualizing things as we get closer and closer. So I think probably one of the other interesting things about this is that there, there's more than one kind of system going on, right? So in class, we're talking about the design of systems and we're using a book as a way to investigate that. Here, yes, there's a structural system going on and that's being explored in a really beautiful way, but there's also a conceptual system, right? There's the concept of exponential series that is happening on this side and that's what's driving the content and the exploration of material that's happening opposite it. So um, it's fascinating to me. This is an example of like of what books can do that other things can't do quite as well. I imagine you could make some kind of web version of this thing that was even more dense, which um, probably someone has done. Okay. So we're getting closer and closer and closer in. And um, at a certain point, of course, the imagery is um, based on conjecture, right? We don't really know what a carbon atom looks like. I mean, does it really look like that? Is that really a photograph of a carbon atom? Um, I don't know. Probably not, but maybe. But we end up with these beautiful patterns and textures as a way of visualizing this idea, okay? So then that's the end of the series. So this is as close in as we get. And this is as far away as we get, all right? Then after this part of the book, there's um, a catalog of all the images. And this is really a nice touch here. Everything is in black and white, except for the image that begins and ends the series, okay? 
In this section, there's additional information about things. So uh, a section about how the film was conceptualized and thinking about um, how to visualize what is happening in the film, this series of interlocking squares in a line that show how each, each the view of each square turns into the, a detail of the view of the next square, right? Uh, information about how powers of 10 works, how that system makes sense. Um, a section on units of length and where those things come from. Beautiful four column system with images sitting on top. One that breaks the system to make it a little bit more lively. Just a delight. Uh, a chronology. And then here's all the source material that talks about where they found uh, the information. In other words, the scientific background for everything you're seeing all the way through to the end. Okay, information about the film, uh, additional reading, an index. And then the book ends. Okay, so I think for me, the most interesting part um, is the idea that up front, as I said, there's this explanation of what you're going to be looking at and how the book is structured. And then there's the idea that we can flip back and forth between the different distances and then compare them, right? So, you know, three, four units in and four units out. So 10 to the fourth meters, 10 to the minus four meters. So just a beautiful book. Um, really fascinating. Let's get out of uh, this. Okay. So like I said before, um, seeing the film in conjunction with the book is a pretty interesting exercise. And also watching the sketch version of the film is fascinating so that you can see the kinds of changes they made between the beginning version and the ending version. Um, the, the sketch version is also more interested in the idea of time, how long it takes for you to travel these various distances. Uh, and that's something that did not end up in the final film. So um, anyway, there you go. Beautiful book. Check it out if you can find it. And uh, thanks as always for watching. See ya.